We're joined tonight by two Russia experts, James Hogue, editor of Foreign Affairs magazine, and Nina Khrushcheva, associate professor of international affairs at the New School here in New York and granddaughter of the late Soviet premier Nikita Khrushchev. We spoke with her earlier in the week and she was kind enough to come back. Welcome to the two of you. Thank you. Let's begin with sort of assessing how this summit went this week between the president and the Russian leadership there. Nina, how do you think it went? I think it went very well. There was a whole range of uh, policy issues that two leaders agree, agreed on. And uh, even the meeting with the prime minister, now Prime Minister Vladimir Putin and Barack Obama went well. I mean, there was no eye contact. A lot of people were looking at that. Right. That was I the was crucial looking, meeting. I thought it was a crucial meeting. And uh, it was very civil. It was very cordial. Uh, Barack Obama made a lot of efforts to uh, to backtrack his earlier comment that Vladimir Putin is one foot in, in the Cold War in the past and another foot in the present. He said that, yes, uh, he's is that a mistake? Looking. I thought it was a mistake. I really mm -hmm. thought that comment was a mistake, and it was, was a strange one uh, to be put forward right before the meeting. But, but nonetheless, I don't think it affected much, and, and the meeting went well, and both leaders were very cordial, although I don't think that they are going to you know, what, what call each other on holidays and weekends. Jim, what do you think? Well, I think the one-foot statement was indeed a misstatement, but not particularly important. Because both parties had decided that they wanted to have a constructive uh, summit, at least in perception, if not in a lot of substance. This did seem to be <clears throat> that there was a plan and they executed that exactly. plan. Exactly. And, and on both sides, they gave speeches that sort of courted the way towards a, a, a good summit. But in reality, uh, except for about three things, all of which were relatively easy to get, a somewhat of a reduction in nuclear arms, which Russia really needs, a um, resumption of uh, military to military um, relations. Except for a few things like this, the big issues, the ones where we have profound differences, um, were left for another day. Mm -hmm. Nina, let me ask you this. When we talk about a family relationship, we might say, who wears the pants in the family? When it comes to the Russian leadership, who is actually in control? Well, it's a question that everybody is asking, and you know my perception, and I'm very unoriginal in this, that Vladimir Putin is the one who is wearing the pants, and and Dmitry Medvedev is a very nice first lady, and he acts like a first lady. He uh, he is very ceremonial. He's very cordial. He's very civil. He dresses well. Uh, he dresses well. Uh, he looks very well put together. He speaks well. So he's a good first lady for for Russia, uh, mm -hmm. being that a patriarchal country. It's only appropriate that we have a leader and then a man who is executing that position. And Jim, do you think Putin's just sort of positioning himself to run again? I don't. I don't know about that. Um, Let's just take the president. He doesn't need to run again. He is in charge. Mm -hmm. If you look at what happened again before the summit, all the major decisions and the tricky ones like uh, conflict in Georgia and whether we're going to go for the WTO membership or not were made by Putin. They weren't made by Medvedev. At the summit, the breakfast meeting between Obama and Putin was far more substantive than anything else that occurred in terms of a discussion. And Obama got the treat of his life in getting a one-hour lecture from Putin on all their interests and their criticisms and complaints. Um, so I think there's no question about who's... Uh, also, I was told a story once that when the two of them go to international meetings together, Putin does all the talking, and Medvedev is a note-taker. I think that tells you all. Gives you a great deal of insight. I want to ask you this, Nina. It, after the collapse of the, uh, the Soviet Union, it seemed that there was a great love fest between the United States and Russia, and especially between our peoples. All that seems to have gone to the wayside now, and that, uh, I don't know, uh, Russians seem disenchanted with the U.S. Is that an accurate perception, and why is that? I think it is an accurate perception, and, you know, remember that before 91, when the Soviet Union collapsed, it was a closed country, so the only way we, the Soviets, knew about the 
United States and, and the West was from, uh, um, from Radio Free Europe that was jammed by the Soviets. So in the whole idea uh, in the Soviet Union was that if the state, if the, the authorities tell you that something is horrible, it must be good uh, because you never trust your government. Uh, and so it must have been good. And, you know, when, when freedoms came, came out, all of a sudden everybody was, uh, was embracing them. But then freedom is a very difficult thing to do. It's a very difficult choice. It's a lot of personal responsibility. And Russians are not used to that. Russians really, I mean, the whole vertical of power that we discussed last time is mm -hmm. when you have Kremlin down, uh, is something that has been part of Russian political system, uh, not just in the Soviet years, but for centuries. And uh, I don't think that Russia has outgrown that. And therefore, um, you know, the United States that does all the, a lot of talking, uh, that uh, uh, that you know, freedoms come with a lot of with a lot of problems as well, and Russians don't want to have those problems. Jim, you think it's just a matter that we realize we're very different people. The 1990s decade, from a Russian point of view, was viewed as a disastrous era in which they became very vulnerable and were greatly weak, and they had something akin to our Great Depression of the 30s. And they felt that we took advantage of that, that we started to dismiss them as a great power, that we expanded NATO and a few other things. Now, Putin comes in, and backed by high oil prices, he brings stability and security to Russia like it had not known for some time. He's a very popular man that may begin to recede as this economic recession takes hold, but he's been very popular. He made the decision that they were getting nowhere to try and integrate with the West, and it wasn't even really in their interest that they should be viewed as a separate world power akin to the United States and China. And they started a campaign not only of becoming more separate, but using us as a foil. And so you have anti-Americanism in Russia at a very high level, and primarily because of the campaign that Putin himself launched and the Russian view that we took advantage of them for about a decade. Nina, I want to finish with something that we talked about when we were talking a few days ago. Raised a lot of eyebrows, the issue of race, President Obama, in Russia. Do you think it had an impact? And if so, how did it have an impact? I don't think so. I was watching the summit very closely, and uh, I think that Barack Obama was taken um, much for what, for what he really was as the president of the United States. I don't think if he were white and uh, blue-eyed, it would have had, it would have been a different reaction. Probably if he were Dick Cheney, which is, which would represent a much more familiar to the Russians form of power, which is, you know, strong, uh, strong man, then the reaction could have been different. I mean, as you know, Henry Kissinger is the most popular politician. We should but point Obama out, you not. were also saying it's not an issue so much of, of black and white. It's, year. it's the issue of otherness. But I think uh, the lukewarm reception or, or public reception of Barack Obama was not because it, he was other, he was black or anything else. It's because he was the American president, a talkative American president, a preacher, and Russians are very non-idealistic about their politics. Nina Khrushcheva, thank, thank you. you both. Thank you.